Cause it's a lot. Meek Mill and P. Diddy matching outfits picture goes viral after Meek Mill comes up in this lawsuit, right? You got this lawsuit where this dude is suing P. Diddy and people been going through it. He brought, uh, uh, I believe, a young Miami name came up in it, like, about her cousin, you know. Meek Mill has been in the spotlight again with his recent actions. Rumor has it that when the feds lost their evidence against Diddy, they decided to ask Meek to testify. In doing so, Meek allegedly revealed unexpected details about Diddy. It all began with an audio clip of Meek, where he can be heard struggling and calling out Diddy's name, which brought the entire situation to light. Meek Mills. Well, he said a Philly rapper. You understand? And it was retracted, redacted in the paperwork to that because first of all, it had Meek Mills, it had Stevie J, they had redacted their names and they had Usher and they redacted their names and just said a uh, performer of the Super Bowl and a Philly rapper. Everybody kind of knew back in the day that Meek Mills and Puff was a little too friendly. Anytime two rappers or two people in the industry come dressed up alike on more than one occasion, they, my man, listen here, man. My dudes in Philly, I got some real strong dudes in Philly. They don't play that shit. And they probably embarrassed for the fact to see that Meek Mills, one of the street guys that came out of there, got caught up in this highly weird shit. This highly weird shit, where is that he's dressing like he dressing the same sh he dressing like Diddy hung up with Diddy I think that Lil Rod know a lot of sh but I know this two men dress alike it's just like two men laying down when they both get up, <laughs> they both homos. <laughs> and that's real talk, bro. My man, you come to, you go to a party, dog, and the nigga got the same shirt you got on, I'm taking my shirt off. I'm walking around in a t-shirt. And then, not to blow, Meek Mills up out the water or anything like that. It was said that they checked his Google search and all the other shit. And he was searching for some online gay porn and all the other shit like that. Oh, wow. That shit is crazy, bro. But listen, those are, those are what you know it's crazy that money, that lifestyle, and you trying to fit into something get you. These guys never set out to do all this. Shit. Meek Mills, when he got into the game, he didn't set out to be uh, uh, questioned about his manhood with Diddy. But he put that self. His Speculation about Diddy has been around for a long time, especially with reports that KD felt uncomfortable at his parties. People have been talking about him for a while, but so far, nothing significant has surfaced. Smith, you told me before that she was at a party before that they attended and you said the party was weird. Tell me about that. Okay, uh, this is Boxer. His name Twan, he's from our neighborhood. He, he was married to uh, Tanisha Arnold. So the bra played Pam on uh, Martin Lawrence. We went to the party with her. I mean, it was a matter of fact, it was a set it off party. Jada Pickett, Pippa Capaz, all of them was there. You know what I'm saying? It was just, uh, seemed like Puff and Tupac was like a couple, it seemed like to me. 
uh, it was just a lot of weird shit going on. And, you know what I'm saying? The vibes ain't there. I guess that that's what Tupac was talking about, the Illuminati and shit. It's like Vivica Fox was with this big gay man. He was 6'9". They called him, his name 6'9". He had the red hair with a big old booty and shit. Nobody was gay no more. What the fuck is going on here? It's just a lot of, a lot of weird shit, dude. You know what I'm saying? That shit, it ain't right. You know what I'm saying? I guess that's what Tupac, I guess he wanted to get up out of the Illuminati or something. But I, I seen her yet. Matter of fact, MC Light pulled off with Tanisha Arnold. You know what I'm saying? In her brand new 560, black one. Yeah, 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 that shit weird, dude. Yeah, that's some weird ass shit going on, you know? Yeah. And what was Tupac doing at the party, yo? Him and Puff was there together. They was there, you know what I'm saying? That's why I don't know how they fucking fell out or nothing like that. They was road dogs. You know what I'm saying? They ain't even got pictures of them. He got on that uh uh that blue sweater with the turtleneck. Him and him hugged up like this with the black hat. Yeah, have you ever seen that picture? Nah, I don't recall, but I'm pretty sure I came across it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That picture there, that they was at that party that day. Yeah, it's just like a bunch of weird shit, that whole fucking yeah, that shit weird, dude. Yeah, bunch of, uh, it ain't right. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm not no gay bastard or not. I mean, none of that shit, but that shit ain't right. You know what I'm saying? That shit, that whole party was weird old out. Yeah, and it was Jaden Pickett. But. You saying that, you saying the whole party was weird. What did you see at the party that made it weird? I mean, I'm confused. I guess it was the Illuminati. It's just weird. I know I wouldn't want to be part of no shit like that. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm from the old school, dude, and uh, that shit wasn't really tolerated with my generation. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, hate crime, yes, but it's more tolerated these days and nothing like that. It's more, you know what I'm saying, more open now. You know what I'm saying? But back then, it was kind of fishy. You know what I'm saying? Still kind of fishy. You know, but it's more... You know, out there now. The incident y'all had with Warren G and Kid Frost. Tell me about that, my man. Okay, Kid Frost had gave a, a party at the House of Blues. One of our big homeboys wanted to go with us. You know what I'm saying? So he went with us and we, he said, Ooh, you young niggas have fun. So one of uh, Kid Frost homies still on my big homie. But he didn't know that he was around, uh, it was maybe about 20 of us. So we, the dude that uh, socked my big homie, we beat the dog shit out of him. So my big homie, he came too. He, uh, he like, that's the motherfucker? We like, yeah. And it was two security guards had him. Had, uh, had the dude that we beat up from Kid Frost entourage. So uh, my big homie knocked that motherfucker out while the yellow jack, you know, the yellow jackets with the event security, they had to do. So my homie still knocking him out. Boom! So the, the dude with the uh, yellow jacket was talking shit. Man, what the fuck is wrong with him? My homeboy knocked out him too. Bam! Like, ooh! So the other one, like, man, he got back. A little Jamaican dude come up talking shit. Man, are you going crazy? My homeboy sock him too. So we went down to get our car for valet. And it was the dude, it's LBC. And he like, what the fuck is that? And he's like, it's Long Beach City Crip. So my homeboy knew this dude was an imposter. He, if you from Long Beach, you gonna say Roller Twenties or Insane. You know what I'm saying? You gonna say you know, a real uh, block boy. You know what I'm saying? 19th Street. You gonna say something. A real Crip said, this nigga say he from Long Beach City Crip. My homeboy like, wait a minute. And knocked him out too. So uh, one of Gene was down there, him and said to the ballers waiting on their cars. And they, I get, they seen my homeboy get busy like that, so they, so uh, they had left before us. Went up to Fat Burgers, so we came, got in our shit. They finally brought our cars to valet. We went up to Fat Burgers, and one of the years, the Cedric Zabalas was up there already, you know, eating they shit and shit. So we came in there. The big homie like, uh, hey, motherfucker. He pointed at Cedric Zabalas, like, man. 
You've been dumping us for years, mother. I'm losing all my motherfucking money betting on your motherfucking ass. So uh, Warren G was right there. He like, my homie like, man, that's a nice ass watch. So uh, he like, uh, man, let me try that on. You know what I'm saying? So uh, by then, uh, my homeboy, somebody got my homeboy attention. And he turned his head. Shit, Cedric Zabalas and what's his name was in the, uh, he was in the rag top 500. Benz. This motherfucker like jumped off. I mean, he, he drove up off the motherfucker. He didn't even pay attention to the curve. He jumped off of the curve instead of using the, uh, you know, the driveway. That shit was funny. But my homie like, damn, we almost bust this whole fucking engine block. Yeah, that's, that, that shit was funny as a motherfucker. Like, damn. It's surprising that Diddy hasn't faced more serious consequences. Remember when 50 Cent was one of the first to label Diddy as gay? Now there's a rumor that Diddy allegedly tried to go after him, but 50 Cent narrowly escaped. It's wild how these kinds of stories keep coming up. 50 came over my house. He met me at the apartment uh, because I overheard the conversation about these guys wanted him dead. So he asked me, did I have a vest? I said, yeah, I got I got a bulletproof vest. So I had some extra vests because I used to buy them from officers and stuff like that. And um, he came over, he tried the vest. It was too big for him. You understand what I'm saying? The vest was too big for him. Uh, so I gave him a smaller cover for the vest pass that he had. And I had told him that those guys were going to come out and try to get him. And we had the conversation. I'm not going to mention that because I talked about it in my book. Uh, 50 then told me he was going to handle his business. But he had to go out to Cancun first. Because he was going to do the How to Rob the Industry song out there. They had gave him... $5,000 I think he's probably get 10 or 5 But they had gave him some upfront money So then I told him We good out at Cancun Because I had met some guys Who worked with the syndicate And I used to go out there every uh, Year Because I used to do the Security at the door at daddy's old, Daddy O So I knew this guy, he was Puerto Rican But he was working out there with the syndicate so if I needed something, whatever I needed, he would make sure I have it in Cancun. So now, long story short, I told 50 he was going to be good when he come out there. Because I was going to bodyguard him. So then he said, all right, cool. So I'm calling 50, he never, because he, he didn't show up. So then I'm walking through the hotel and his manager Got his manager name. Say, yo, Big Gene, what's up? He said, I need to speak to Chad. I said, well, what's, what's up? He said, uh, 50 shot. He's in ICU. They don't know if he's going to make it. I want to know if I'm all right. I'm going to be all right. I said, so what the fuck you need to speak to Chad for? And what the fuck is you doing in the pool? If he's shot. I went and got a phone card. I paid a hundred dollars for a phone card. You only get like 10 minutes on them. <laughs> and I start calling 50, I start calling 50 phone. And this girl eventually picked up and I said, yo, tell 50 this Gene. And he said, uh, she said, okay, Gene. I said, is he all right? She said she was gonna make it. He gonna be all right. I tell him you call. So the next time I saw 50 after that, he was, it's your birthday song. And we were in Puerto Rico at Jack the Rap. And I was with the black hand clip, right? 50 wasn't speaking to none of them at the time. I was sitting over by the side. He came directly over to me. He said, yo, Big Gene. I said, what up, 50? He said, they can't stop what God got planned. 
and gave me dap and walked on. This isn't exactly new. It seems like anyone who speaks up ends up being targeted, which might explain why R. Kelly wasn't openly discussed for so long. People likely understood the risks of speaking up. Between who was the top rapper now? Nas and Jay-Z, and then the next thing you know, Nas has a nervous breakdown and he's taken out of the game and then saw Jay-Z. They saw Jay-Z. Saw Jay-Z. And he was working with R. Kelly and they were making so many records together. You know, they made all of those records together. They both f***ed Aaliyah. Jay-Z unplugged. Yeah. The Jaguar Riders there, yeah. heart of the city. Yeah. It's the, it's the 21 year anniversary. It's the 21 year anniversary. Month. And I don't think we've seen nothing like that since. And I know you posted it. We're going to talk about the network, but I know you posted it and put it out there. Uh, I want you to touch on the either the genius or the insanity of Jay-Z. Um, this man, as far as what he's done since then, mm. is, you know, either preordained, destined, or he had a plan. Mm. But it seemed like he geared himself towards it. But mm. you were there to witness it firsthand from what he was back then. Mm. I just want you to like, because, you know, not many people have a firsthand account of what this man is doing and what he's about to do. In 21 years, I have never had anything to say about Mr. Sean Carter other than the fact that we had a pleasant working relationship and he was an excellent businessman. 21 years. In 21 years. <clears throat> and after 21 years, what I will say to you is, is, is this. first time I ever saw Jay-Z or even heard him spit a rhyme was at an MC battle, street battle in New York. But he didn't show up as Jay-Z. He didn't show up as the hottest rapper on the street. He showed up as the nigga that was with Big L. Rest For in those peace. of you. Rest in peace, Big L. Rest in peace, Big L. One of the that dopest. The One of the dopest. Yes. Big L was who put Jay-Z on. Without question. And then Big L died, and then the next thing you know, Jay Z. And then, you know, he starts clientele with Tupac and clientele with Biggie and doing songs with Biggie and building a working, you know, camaraderie with Honeycombs and um, AKA Diddler, I mean Diddy. And um, why do you give him the honeycombs? Why, why do you give him honeycombs? Because he smacks so sweet. <laughs> that fucking side of my <laughs> anyway. Um, so yeah, then you know, and then reasonable doubt was happening, and then Dame's in the picture, and Dame's building Rockefeller, and everybody's talking about Jay Z, Jay Z. And don't get me wrong, there is nobody. Who loves reasonable doubt more than me? Mm. At the time Nobody. of Nobody. No, still. Yes, to this day. Still. Listen to me. I don't give a fuck how I feel about you. For me to have bad feelings about someone and not acknowledge art and its greatness or at its finest is hating. Maybe I don't fuck with you, but them shoes is hot, yo. You know what I'm saying? Like it's. You gotta be real. Mm. So I will never. Shit, I was just listening to Watch the Throne earlier this week, and I'm and that shit was enraging me. Cause I'm like, y'all motherfuckers was living for this fucking album and was Kanye, 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 Kanye. And then all of y'all made all of this money on this motherfucking dude, and now all of a sudden. Who, him? Look. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Like he was good enough when you let him slump just Blaze's fucking whole career. Mm. He was the shit. That's the whole issue in the show. It, it, it was worth putting just Blaze on the line for because just Blaze was Rockefeller production. Until Kanye. Yeah. Who's just Blaze producing for now? That I don't know. Who is he? Yeah, I about to say that I don't know. And he was it. He was he was the movement. Where is just Blaze? Yeah. I mean, he was making hoes beats. 
You got title. You're a billionaire. Mm. Where the fuck is Just Blaze? That's the question. Is he, why is he, is, he's not at least an executive at Rock Nation? He's not at least an executive at Title. At least. Like I said, Biggie, uh, Biggie died, Tupac died. And then there was the, the, the fight between who was the top rapper now, Nas and, and Jay-Z. And then the next thing you know, Nas has a nervous breakdown and he's taken out of the game and then it's all Jay-Z. It's all Jay-Z. It's all Jay-Z. And he was working with R. Kelly and they were making so many records together. You know, they made all of those records together. They both fucked Aaliyah. They shared so much in common. You know? And then, there was a falling out. And that's like it never happened. Whoever talks about best of the both worlds, best of both worlds. Nobody talks about that. Nobody talks about this yet. Nobody yeah, they, talks I, about I, that I, project. Swept, that nigga swept that smooth under the rug. Why? <laughs> yeah, we know why. You know what? I got a better question. Yeah. How valuable is a Biggie Smalls verse? Mm. Yeah. Puffy has been making money off of Biggie's name for longer than Biggie was alive. People keep forgetting he hadn't turned 25 yet. He was still 24 when he died. It's been over 25 years. Fucking Puffy has been making money on that boy's name longer than he can live. It supported all the bad boy. His catalog. Clearly, a Biggie Smalls verse. It's very valuable. Am I wrong? Does anybody disagree with me? No, that's facts. So then what the fuck happened to the commission? What happened to that album? Right. It was recorded. It was being mixed and mastered upon Biggie's death. It was supposed to have came out that summer after Biggie's album because Biggie's album was slated. He died a week and a half before his album came out. Then the commission was supposed to come out and that was supposed to be his exit from Bad Boy. And then starting his own company. <clears throat> so tell me something. And this ain't me being an asshole. I think everybody that knows Sean Carter knows that he will slump anyone in any relationship for a dollar. Look at how he did Dane. Like, I don't give a fuck if you wanted to get away from your homie, if you wanted to get away from your partner, but to do it the way he did it, it's malicious. But maybe that was because he was fucking the girl that didn't want you. Oh. Let the church say amen? I don't know. Maybe that's why. Maybe that's why you moved his ass around and now the Rockefeller so tough and then just moved right over to Def Jam. By the way, wasn't this all around the time when Aaliyah died? Yeah. And Beyonce's solo career was struggling? Jam on your horn now, that fucking bullshit ass record. Mm. From the Austin Powers shit was some of the worst shit ever. They were having a hard time taking her solo. And then Aaliyah died. And then they brought Rich Harrison in, and you know, kind of think it's okay right now. She liked posing with him in pictures for, for page six. Aaliyah didn't. She fell in love with Dane. And Aaliyah's gone, and you know. You have to start asking yourself questions after being in this business for this long. If you're a halfway intelligent person, when do you start questioning how lucky some motherfuckers keep getting? Right. Is it really a conspiracy if the same person keeps benefiting off the same kind of tragedy over and over and over again? So to answer your question, um, I'm sure he's always gonna be a billionaire and I'm sure he's got great things 
to happen. I mean, look, he's got the job with the NFL. He's hooking all his friends up with the halftime shows. I mean, think about it. Think about the halftime shows. Jennifer Lopez, Shakira, All Rock Nation. Now uh, Rihanna, and then um, we had the whole LA thing, which of course he was involved in that. And then they they pulled Mary J. Blige off to you know make make sure she got that money for Kendu. The rumors about Diddy's sexuality are intense, with unsettling claims involving unusual behavior, multiple partners, and other bizarre details. It's a lot to cover. So if you're interested, it's worth looking into yourself. These stories and everything like that, because this is stuff that happened back in the day. And then maybe that if they knew there was going to ever be a YouTube or they knew there was going to ever be social media, uh, a lot of stuff probably wouldn't have got played out like it did. But things happen and, and these are just stories from the past. I would like to use that as, uh, what you call that, um, just just to just to clear the facts up what's going on but it all started we was in atlanta and this story starts when i'm with puff and he's in the exotic bookstores and he's doing shopping right he's shopping getting his stuff and everything like that so you know this is the first time I was ever in an exotic bookstore with Puff. So, you know, I'm giving him his space. He's taking things off the shelves and stuff like that. Cause they gave him a brown paper bag. When they gave him a brown paper bag, he was just putting stuff in there. So I said, damn, you know, he gotta go put it on the counter and, you know, show everybody what he's getting. So as he going, I'm just looking at the places where he's picking stuff from. So there's one part he, <laughs> he picked up, uh, some things from up here on my left side. And then he, he picked like a quite a few of them down. I'm like, yeah, okay. He put them in the bag. So when I went by there and I looked up there I, and it said butt plugs. And I like, hey yo, <laughs> I, was, I was messing with him. Cause people don't understand, you know, we was we we was like friends. He was a part of the same gang, so I'm still gonna tease him. I'm still gonna mess with him and everything like that. I could do that. It wasn't just no security thing. So I say, yo, what are you getting this for? <laughs> and it said butt plugs, and he was like, yo, yo, can I do my shopping by myself? I said, yeah, you could do it by yourself, brother. And he, he started walking and everything like that. So when he got, to, I just waited at the counter. So when he got to the counter. He didn't even have to show the guy nothing. He just gave the guy a wad of money. I mean, I mean, like he gave a, the guy a stack something like this. And Puff wasn't a dude to carry no twenties and no fifties and nothing like that. And I mean, like he just said, "Boom," and we walked out the store. So we had to leave Atlanta and go to uh, North Carolina for a show. You understand? And uh, it was him, this rapper. Sarah and this other girl. We all got on a G a G G5 jet and we flew to uh G4 jet and we flew to uh, uh North Carolina. So uh later on that I think that afternoon, same day, um this rapper and him, they all in the room together. You know, it's Sarah, the girl, Puff, and, and this dude, this rapper. So uh, I'm here at the door and stuff like that. Like, yeah. So then, next thing you know, somebody rang the doorbell. We had the presidential suite where we was at. So I opened the door, and uh, the dude said, "Yo, I'm here for my cousin." I said, "Who your cousin?" And he said, uh, "Ja Rule." I said, "Well, he busy right now." He said. Uh, he busy doing what? I said, he would puff, they're in the room, they busy, they don't want to be bothered. He said, well, I'm going in there. I said, bro, you ain't going in there because he told me they don't want nobody to be bothering them. And he was like, yo, I don't care, man. I'm going in there. That, that bull like that. I said, yo, bro, Jesus Christ, I have to come down here and take the air out of my body before you get in that room right there. Watch, watch. He tried to bum rush me, I grabbed his and threw him against the piano. When I threw him into the piano, Puff and Ja Rule runs out the room. Puff got his towel, Ja grabbing his towel, but they butt the f naked. And so then, uh, 
Ja was like, yo, what's going on? Yo, Jay, that's my cousin. He know me well. You know, uh, and Puff was like, yo, Jay, what happened? I said, he tried to get in the room. I told him he couldn't get in the room. And he was like, he just looked, Puff looked at Ja. He said, yo, Ja said, you ain't want to go in that room because there's a lot of freaking shit going on. <laughs> so I was like, oh, he said there was a lot of freaking shit going on. So that was basically that story, man. You know what I'm saying? They went back in the room. Dude felt a certain kind of way and he left out. So we, I seen them at the concert the next day and they tried to, you know, form up against me. But my man Frank was like, I told my man Frank, I was like, yo Frank, put yourself in that position. Somebody trying to get in the room and Jai told you don't let nobody get in the room. What would you do? Now y'all could do whatever y'all want to do, man. But you know, I ain't taking no losses. He said, yo, you good, you good, and that was it. Bro, when, when Josh said, you don't want to come up in there, a lot of freaky stuff is going on. You got to use your mind. What they was doing with those butt plugs. <laughs> <laughs> right. Despite all the rumors, some people still don't see things the same way. Ice Q, for instance, has defended Diddy, saying he's being unfairly targeted as if Diddy doesn't deserve the scrutiny. Here, bruh, representing Houston today with this Astro Rockets, the Astros on here, you know what I'm saying? The Houston Rockets, everything about Houston today, man. Salute to those people that just went out there and had to go through that. That I guess it was some kind of hurricane, tornado, rainstorm, whatever, man. I got a lot of family out that way, man. I just hope everybody's out there good. Showing love to my city, man. I appreciate that, man. But yeah, man, it's, you know, yeah, man, it was crazy, man, with that hurricane. I mean, all the power was off. So, you know, we finally getting the power back. So, you know, everything good. Yeah, all right. Well, let's put some light on this right here, man. Let's go. What you got to ask me today, Mighty? What's good? Hey, man, the first thing I want to ask you about is Ice Cube. He came out with a comment oh, that went viral. God. He said that he feel like Diddy is being targeted. Uh, how you feel about him saying that? My man, Ice Cube was saying what, if you read through the line what Ice Cube was saying, he was saying that all us or all of them has done the same sh Diddy been doing. And because he pissed somebody off, they targeted him. They are, they're gonna make an example out of him. Whatever you do at this point in time, you understand? We gonna crush everything that you got to show the other people behind him. You don't come out and speak up or speak out on us. What Ice Cube was saying, brother, was that it ain't only Diddy picked on, targeted. That means it's other people that they know, but they just not gonna say anything about it. You understand? They not gonna use them right now and put them up on a pedestal and knock them down like they do in Diddy. If Diddy hadn't done anything, if Diddy wasn't involved in anything, ain't nothing they could do to you. They could come at you, but if you got enough money like he had enough money, you understand? Whatever they say, the lies don't stand, bro. The truth stand. So Ice Cube saying that, I was a little disappointed. But what he was actually letting y'all know was this. It ain't only Diddy. There's other people. But because he came out and called those people racist, when he, cause he came out and tried to put a lawsuit against them, they gonna show him, you don't bite the hand to feed you. That's what that was all about. I met Ice Cube before. When uh, Puff was doing a video with Fabulous, in California on the beach, Ice Cube, within walking distance, was doing a uh, beauty shop uh, at this, uh, what's it, beauty, it was barber shop at this, um, at this place. It's, I guess it was a barber shop right there next to the beach or whatever. He was shooting it there. So Kobe was there, Fabulous, Puff, and then we went over to the set a barbershop. I met him before a good brother, man. But all he was saying in a slick way was that it ain't only Puff. 
Puff ain't the only one that's doing this. He's just been talking about what he has said and what he did, bro. Yeah, I know Cube, he getting a lot of backlash right now for that comment. Yeah, he ain't the only one. Look what Misa did, bro. Puff baby mama. First she was saying, yo, you went from making hit records, six songs, traveling the world, now you doing, you selling alcohol and death to the kids or something like that. And now she done came to his defense. You gonna have people come to his defense and say things because they know that they could be next or their legacy could be gone because of what he did and how he operated. She know that Justin could lose everything that he had in Justin's name. All the people that sue him, if half of them win, that's a whole lot of money. He'll never get the endorsement, he'll never get what he had before. She see that now that Justin and anybody that's a part of him can lose what they have and not gain anything behind none of this. So I want to ask you, your personal opinion, do you feel like Diddy is being targeted? Do I feel like he's being targeted? Yeah, yeah. I feel like that he's getting what he deserves. Point blank. Man, listen to me, man. All the stuff that he's gotten away with over the years, you know what I'm saying? Smacking people, beating girls, cheating people out of their publishing or their marketing or whatever's the stuff that he did. All the stuff that he did over the years, man, he just finally, karma is, is, is crazy. It'll, 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 it'll reach back and bite you in the ass. And he's just getting what he deserves. Targeted? Yeah, good. But they're gonna be able to prove some of the stuff that he's done. Yeah, he ain't looking too good for him. Not at all. Not at all. And it won't be looking good for him. They got enough witnesses, man. They got enough evidence against him. It's gonna be. You <laughs> listen, you don't hire six different lawyers or seven for different situations unless you've been involved in those different situations and you need six top lawyers to handle it. You're talking about drugs, talking about guns, talking about sex trafficking. You understand? You're talking about uh, embezzlement, taxes, all that. Come on, man. They gonna come at him. I guess it's not too surprising, given that he's reportedly pretending to be straight while rumors suggest otherwise. It's what you might expect from someone presenting a tough image while living in luxury. Y'all, when y'all act like this on YouTube, like y'all haven't been here, Reggie Wright, speak on this stuff. <laughs> I've been, I told y'all, I said, real soon, well, it's gonna start coming out about men, because Puffy is not paying for male escorts, ordering up male escorts if he's not doing it for his enjoyment. You only order up female escorts and other females. If you get down like that, you don't be ordering up no mail unless you want that mail with you. So, for all the others acting shocked and surprised, I said somebody's gonna come out and expose him real soon. And of course, that's what's happening. It's unfortunate that uh, stuff like that happened to people. I know y'all believe in that Illuminati stuff. I don't believe in an Illuminati. I'm gonna tell y'all up front. And y'all say now because the powers in the bee is not protecting Puffy is the reason that uh, these people are, are, are coming out and suing them. Well, that ain't why. Because now uh, once you pay out people, and that's why when he paid out that, that judgment, and the next day I told him that was bad. Because when attorneys will take on cases and say, hey, this dude paying out this quick, He'll pay us a million dollars right quick, or $300,000, whatever, if he wants stuff to go away. And 
you know, I'm sure those insurance companies that he has that mainly y'all don't know is the one that be paying those things out. I try to educate y'all on is usually your company insurance companies that, that pay them out and make the decisions when you have the business insurance or the businesses you have the different type of insurance that make you pay out the things because by the time you have all of the different lawyers and stuff involved it's just as quick to sell a case so that's a, unfortunately is what's happening to Puffy everybody's gonna come out of the Woolworths so anyway, I'm not trying to say that he don't deserve any of these these are lawsuits. I don't believe about Meek Mills. I'm a Meek Mill fan. I don't know what happened. I noticed when he talked about it though. <sighs> Meek Mills didn't deny it. <laughs> like I said, I don't want to believe that uh, that is true. But I am one of those like y'all. When I don't say you motherfucking crazy. I ain't never did no like that. <laughs> Then it's usually some smoke uh, with that fire. And so I'm not up here saying Meek Mills was involved in that thing. I'm not saying Usher. <laughs> yeah, I am. Uh, or Justin Bieber and all of them. <laughs> Puffy gonna turn out to be our modern day. Oh, y'all about to get mad. He gonna be Mike, you know, my, our modern day Michael Jackson is what Puffy turned out to be, in my opinion. That's my opinion, my opinion only. Oh, I know black folks get mad when we say Michael was doing that stuff, but I believe Michael like uh, doing things with little boys as well. That was my opinion. Oh, uh, ask me how I know. I know a alleged victim that was around us. He's a very, very good friend with Ray J. Today. But anyway. Oh, uh, ah, man. It's hard for me to say whether this stuff is true or not. And I'm not going to get up there and start debating it. But y'all heard it. I've been telling y'all. all puffy been giving y'all all the signs that he's trying to come out of the closet. Hope he just finally just... Come out of the closet. It's obvious in 2024, we don't care. Society don't care no more. They done TV shows and all of that done brainwash us to say it. Half of y'all, well, maybe 10% of y'all in the comment section. Take And, hey, that's just the era we live in. I have a problem with gay. Y'all say, well, why you care what a man doing and all that? Because that's one of the main reasons that God flooded the world and, and set the world on fire and did all the stuff that he did because he was mad when he found out that men were down here having sex with animals and having sex with other men and stuff like that. That was the one thing that pissed off God. Now read your Bible, y'all learn. I know there's more, more to it than what I just explained, but that was the, the gist of what happened. So that's why I have a problem with homosexuality. But I know in 2024, I'm from an old school where in the 80s and the 90s, people that were doing that were hiding it. But and now y'all out with it. So, hey, that's on y'all. But my point is, to saying that is, Puff needed just to come on out with it. Because no lawsuits and stuff is going to keep, people going to keep blackmailing him and threatening him and they're trying to expose him with these things because they think that he's scared of these things coming out and once you don't give a fuck and tell them I don't care do what y'all gotta do these were adults these weren't kids everybody that did something we'd love to hear your thoughts on this don't forget to like and subscribe for more updates